So we're up in the uh, Boogie Power attic and uh, I've dragged this out of the dirt. It's about time we sort out the rear suspension on the lemon because it's ancient and because I've got a nice new tube over there wrapped up with new bearings, some 21mm bars to go in and I basically need to just redo this horrible nasty thing. So I'm going to use this old beam, I don't know what it was from, some phase 3, 306 that a local Piggy Power fan, Brad Watkins, shout out to him, Hat. See if we can save a few bits from it and um, paint the bits up ready. The hubs are actually pretty good, things like that. And uh, get it ready to go on. We'll replace brake lines, put new dampers for it, blah 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 blah. Anyway, I'm going to strip it down. So that's how it looks. Obviously I've got the torsion bars out of the trailing arm still, but it's a bit late tonight to be smacking on them. Um, I could try a puller, I've got a really nice puller just for doing this, this but I'm right how seized they are. So we'll give it some soaking with plus gas and give it an absolute smack during the daylight. Um, so parts we're going to make use of here, we'll make use of um, these brackets here, kind of hold the thing together. Um, cleaned up trailing arms with the hubs at the bearings because they're quite new or very new same on that side the uh, trailing arms bearing shafts themselves as you might be able to see are not usable even this one that looks quite clean is pretty well worn there's a nice shine mark on this side where it's just worn in but we've got a set of second-hand ones that are very good from Steph um, who I'll put a link on because he's really been helping me with parts for this beam rebuild uh, so there we go, there's a strip down, next thing we'll do is we'll get it to Mickey's to uh, press out these old trailing arm shafts um, and then clean up the trailing arm, clean up those bracket things, new set of bolts and, and then what? Paint it on. Okay so a quick tip here, uh, if you all know this already if you've been into Peugeot's, but the anti-roll bar brackets on the end there's actually a thread in there, the bung is plastic, it normally breaks out, I've had to chip this one out because it just strips itself. Put some freon oil in there, a bit of grease on a Peugeot head stud, uh, this one's an XUD I think or an HDI one, they're the same thread. Thread is perfect, the, the bolt is strong and you wind that in and that pushes out the anti-roll bar. Um, at the moment I've got a breaker bar on it, but it'll take it. Alternatively, you can smash it off, but of course you bend really badly that bracket, that uh, piece, so we'll take that off. And then we'll take the seal off, clean it off, stick it in the bath to de-rustify it, and then paint it up. Make it all look nice and shiny, where no one will see it. But I'll know it shiny. If you get to this point, congratulations. I've got both hubs off. Um, I think some attempt to fix ABS was at some point, including this was all melted. Um, and they'd put a hub on it, which I think is a 206 hub her feeling because the ABS ring was slightly different and on the other one the stub was ground down so shame on you if you know where this beam came from and it was yours and you changed that bearing terrible flipping heck so I've got to put a new stub this little bit of axle this sort of stub pin on the other one that'll be sorted and I'll have to cut this off as well the bolt sheared off and so a new ABS sensor two new rear hub bearings they both actually are shocking even though they look new, I think they've been replaced recently. Anyway, uh, another tip. So I've got out, you can either beat it out, uh, your rear torsion bar. Um, I cut it off initially, and then I actually have got this puller, which is quite handy. Um, I was going to make one of these, and someone had made one. No, I'm sure others have attempted making these and not been successful. But whoever made this made a flipping good job. So it goes on, 
and pulls on the like that goes on there and pulls the torsion bar out. Did a great job. We'll see about the other one in a bit. Um, alternatively, use a slide hammer, bit of heat, smash it out with a hammer at this point though, because you can just put it on the ground and just smash the heck out of it. Once you've done that, I've used a couple of wire wheels to clean up as best I can in, in there, and then to clean up the, the, uh, the threads on the torsion bar. And then I've covered it in grease, and then I'm just gonna beat it through, just match the spines up, and then give it a beating. Like that. Do that a few times to clean the threads up, basically. And then we'll head off to Mickey Kellett's and use his big press to push out these, which are dead, and push some replacement ones in. Uh, thumbs up to Steph, we're going to mention him a few times. He does uh, rear axles for 306s, 205s, 106s, and we'll soon be doing some 206s as well if he has enough support. So I'll put a link down the bottom of this video and I'll mention him a few times, I expect. He's supplying the parts for this and the guidance. Thank you very much, Steph. Oh yeah, check out his 205 as well. Sweet 205. Right, if I haven't shown this already, all the different pits, then this is most of them. There was a few more in a box, uh, end plates, a few bits and brackets and bobs and like that. Obviously dampers, not here. Uh, so we've got our 21mm bars painted red, common colours, yellow bar, uh, main tube. The bearings came with this tube, which was quite handy, uh, they came from Germany. They didn't come with the end seals though, so Steph provided those in the little kit here. So we've got um, anti-roll bar end plate seals and the main seals here. Uh, he also provided uh, the nuts and bolts that we're going to need, uh, the brand new ones, which is handy. And he's had these, uh, which anyone, if anyone knows about these offset ones, they're horrible things. These are made out of stainless. I uh, wasn't too sure how good, but they're not magnetic, so that's a good sign. We've got uh, lithium grease, EP2, and some copper grease field bolts. And then uh, we've got these second-hand but very good shafts, which is ideal. So we're going to pop the seals in today. We've only got about 10 minutes spare. And then uh, pop the arms in. Now, the bearings come pre-greased. But if anyone knows anything about these, you want to just grease them up as much as you possibly can. Um, I don't believe there's too much grease you can put in one of these. So I've got a brush and a stick. Cue the duct tape. And I'm going to stick some grease on there and get it in there. Then loads of grease on these shafts, slide them in, uh, and other stuff will happen.
Right folks, so we've got the um, front most rear mounts in, uh, bolted up with nice new bolts from Steph, from Steph Axles. Um, we'll put those in place before we put the bars because you'll never get these bolts in once the bars are in place. And I'm just going to give it a bit of a wrestle now um, to try and get these 20mm bars in um, or get in a position that I can do so. Um, I've gone for some EBAC springs on the front which lower at about 30mm so I also would like to set this to negative 30 millimeters. Um, and Steph has very kindly supplied me the measurement from shock hole to shock hole. So I can set it up now about minus 30. And then obviously once everything's settled on the car, we can check that. But with them all greased up, so the spine ends have all been cleaned. I'm going to cover them in copper slip and then we'll slip them on. And uh, that means for adjustment in the future, be dead easy still to adjust them because they're covered in grease. This is why you let the pros do it. Our offset washer in stainless with our bolt. Uh, I think it's a yeah, it is 10, 10.9, which is very nice tensile strength. Uh, so we'll get a bit of grease in there as usual. And get a bit of grease on our washer. It's stainless, so hopefully less likely to have any issues with getting stuck in there. I'd say that's almost there. Wants us to tap more. There you go. And then we'll get her in there, like that. See that? Little screwdriver. And squeeze her across into the slot. Hopefully, so that's center also. screen. We've got the offset washer. And then we've got our little retaining bolt that holds the offset washer. That'll go on like that. If that's in line, of course, which it's not quite. Stick the other side so I've got your view. <coughs> if the groove which it sits in isn't cleaned out properly, this is the problem you'll have. Of course, what you can do is flick the washer around. We'll flick it out and start again. And try the opposite groove. Like that. Oh, that went a bit better. Obviously I've cleaned out that groove, but I've cleaned out that groove. Oh, that little bolt goes in. Lovely, like that. Allen key, 6mm I believe. Winds that puppy in. Oh, it's 5mm I should say. Lovely. Clean it off for cleaning off sake. And then what we're going to do until we've got our anti-roll bar, we're looking at getting a hybrid one, but um, nothing on the market at the moment. So we'll be using a standard D-Turbo GTR 6.1, which I think is 24mm, I think. But for now, we'll put our 
ARB plate back in. Again with nice new seals from Mr. Steph. I'll just put that in finger tight for now. There'll obviously be another bracket off here as well which holds the handbrake cable and the brake pipe. There we go. Just fit the dampers, which we'll do in a second, um, and I'm not going to fit the calipers on the end here, um, I'm not going to put the calipers on either side and discs and hubs and everything, it's just more weight to try and huff over underneath the car, so once the dampers are on I will be preparing to rip the other one off, but just to give you a little bit of insight onto the sort of, I don't know what's the word, uh, the, the diary of things. There's the pistons and rods that have been out for I don't know how many times because the head's being rebuilt, currently head's being skimmed. So my actual priority after I put these steps is to put these two So here's the beam, uh, all kind of finished up-ish. Obviously it's not in the car yet. I'm not putting the discs and the brakes on because it's just going to add more weight to try and wrestle this thing in, which would be a little bit annoying. Uh, so that's it, I'm going to have some dinner now. This is going to get wrapped up, going to get the head on, the engine running. Uh, and then we'll be bolting this up with the new front brakes, which is another episode. Dramatic pause for people to write comments about how much they don't like gas dampers and what I should have really put in there, but meh, they're great for the price. And I quite like them, they're on the race track too. I'll give you a pause though to have a moan. Okay then, so, dinner time. So about midpoint here, um, the old beam has, uh, has just dropped down and our new beam is here, ready to go. Uh, I think I've still got an ABS sensor that I need to get for that side, but we'll find out as I've did. Um, what else? Brakes. They're disconnected from the car. Just need to disconnect the handbrake. We've got some new cables. But what we're basically just going to do today is it's a damp, miserable bank holiday, and I'm bored. But at the same time, I need to go to bed. I'm just going to have that bolted up today. That's my plan. Bolt that up, strip out the... Um, sorry, so tired. Strip out the anti-roll bar from that one. And there's one hub that's good on this one, and one hub that I need to strip off another one um, to put on here, because we've got no hubs. And there's like a brand new hub on one side of this one, and there's a brand new hub and an old axle I've got as well. So we'll switch those over. Once the axle is put on, the less weight on this, the better, to be honest. So that's what we're going to do next. So for the rear brakes, we're going for a pretty standard setup to be honest, they're more inadequate um, for the back end of one of these 306s. We've got some braided lines, um, we had to get an ABS sensor, but that's fine, it's simple enough. Um, stock rear discs, and I've got some Bosch pads, they're about as good as you're going to get for a stock pad without going some funny compounds. Um, they bite when cold, they work fine when hot. Um, I've rebuilt two calipers. For the rear, um, some new bits and bobs in, some, in them to make them more fresh and lovely, and some new brake cables, bolts all cleaned up, brackets all cleaned up, uh, so it's just a case of bolting this all on now, so let's do that.
brave colour choice on the calipers. Hopefully we'll see at some point in this project why I've done them that colour. And uh, as we go on further, stainless exhaust still there. Uh, gas adjustables, I think I've mentioned that. They're 21mm torsion bars and we've got a 24mm just standard GTI 6 anti-roll bar in there. Uh, rebuilt calipers, uh, new handbrake cables, nice fresh brake lines, which I didn't record all doing because it's just sort of menial stuff. All the brackets all shiny, all the seals brand new, looking good. So now we're just going to bleed out these brakes, I'm just letting them sort of uh, gravity bleed. And then I'm going to roll this arch, so you can see normal arch, roll the arch, uh, I'll just do that now while I'm waiting for these brakes to bleed, um, get the wheels back on and we'll get on the road and see how much better this feels, which it should feel all done like better, um, because the back end isn't sort of half seized and the brakes are new and there's actual good brake fluid in it, the brake fluid came out was black, so this will be good, even though I can't really drive it very far. Well. well, as with everything on this lemon, nothing goes well. So this arch here is all crumbling and everything, so it looks an absolute mess. Um, and now I've put it back on its wheels. For some reason the wheels both sides are going, are closer to the inner arch by about 10 millimetres. Why? No idea. 